On this episode of Redia, we'll learn how to track down satellites by leveraging publicly accessible datasets and open source tools. What exactly is a satellite? Put simply, a satellite is any object in space that orbits around a larger object. There are two main types of satellites, natural and artificial. Naturally occurring satellites include things like the moon and comets, while artificial satellites include things like the International Space Station and the Starlink constellation, which we will be focusing on today. Using open source intelligence, we can scan through public datasets to retrieve information about a satellite. Each artificial satellite in orbit is given two things. It's given an international designation and a NORAD ID, which is the catalog number for the satellite. For example, the international designation of the International Space Station is 1998-067A, and the NORAD ID is 25544. By getting the NORAD ID of a satellite, you can obtain all sorts of interesting information about that satellite, including its orientation with an orbit, velocity, upcoming passes, and more. In this video, we will be tracking down Starlink 31046, which is a satellite within the Starlink constellation. One tool that can help you track down satellites is N2IO. N2IO is an online website that provides real-time satellite tracking data, allowing users to monitor the positions and trajectories of thousands of satellites. To use N2IO to track down a satellite, simply visit n2io.com. Then go under Satellites on Orbit and click Search Database. Under this input, you can put in the name of the satellite you are looking for or the international designator of the satellite. Since I already know the international designator of the Starlink satellite, I could just input that here in this input box. So I know it's 2023-192X, and I can click search. Here I get it as an output, and when I click on the satellite, I get general information about the satellite, including its NORAD ID, international code, some of its Keplerian element characteristics, such as the perigee, apogee. I get its launch date and the launch site, as well as a general ground track of the satellite relative to my location, as well as pass information and characteristics of the pass of the satellite. Down here, I get something called a two-line element set which is a descriptor of the satellite. A two-line element set, also known as a TLE, is a standardized format used to describe the orbits of satellites. The format is split into two lines. The first line includes the satellite number and the international designator, the epoch year, and descriptors of the satellite's motion and orbit. The second line also includes the international designator alongside the satellite's Keplerian elements. Keplerian elements, also known as orbital elements, are a set of parameters used in orbital mechanics to describe the shape, size, and orientation of an orbit. They include the sipping major axis that indicates how far away the satellite is from Earth, the eccentricity, which describes how elongated the orbit is, the inclination, which describes the tilt of the orbit, the argument of perigee, which is the angle between the ascending node, the point where the reference plane intersects the satellite's orbital path, and the point of the closest approach to Earth in a satellite's orbit, the right ascensation of ascending node, which is the angle between the reference direction and the ascending node of the orbit, and finally the mean motion, which indicates the amount of time the satellite has been in orbit. The Keplerian elements are really helpful for understanding where a satellite is oriented within space, but they can be tricky to understand. Fortunately, there's a great online tool that lets you visualize Keplerian elements called Orbital Mechanics. On orbitalmechanics.info, we can use the Keplerian elements extracted from N2IO in order to plot the orbit of the Starlink satellite. To do this, we're going to create an orbit. So I'm going to name it after the Starlink satellite name. So I'm going to paste that into this input box and I'm going to click Add Orbit. This is going to initialize our orbital plane. So the first one describes the altitude of the orbit. You can bring it all the way up. And then for the other ones, these are the rest of the Keplerian elements. E stands for eccentricity. So if we look here, and we're going to be extracting this information from the TLE. And the bottom row here contains all the Keplerian elements. 
And we know that eccentricity is going to be this value um, according to the TLE standard. And the decimal point is assumed. So it's going to be 0 0.000815. For practical purposes, we're going to round that to about zero. So you could type in zero and then click enter. This third value here is inclination, which is the tilt of the orbit. The inclination is listed as this. 53.1605 we're gonna round to 53 so I'm gonna click on this value here and I'm gonna type in 53 and then click enter next up we have the argument of perigee the argument of perigee on the TLE is right after the eccentricity so it's right here and this is 77.3823 so I'm gonna round it to 77 I'm gonna click this value here and then hit enter. This horseshoe icon stands for the right sensation of the ascending node. This is shown here, so I can round that to 185 and then plug that in. And then lastly, we have this V symbol. This stands for the mean anomaly. The mean anomaly on the TLE is shown as this value. 302. I'm going to round it up to 303 and then we could plug it in to our simulation. And there you have it. This is the plotted out orbital visualization of the Starlink satellite using orbitalmechanics.info. Another application that allows you to track down all these details about a satellite is GPredict. GPredict is a free application for real-time satellite tracking and orbit prediction. You can download it from this website here by going to the downloads page and getting the source code from GitHub. In order to make the satellite tracking process more streamlined, I developed an open source tool called Satintel, which provided the international designator or NORAD ID of any artificial satellite, outputs general information about that satellite, orbital elements, and past prediction times. To use Satintel, you can visit the GitHub repository at this link, and then you can scroll down to look at the details of the repository. And to clone it, click code and copy the URL to clipboard. Then you can open up a terminal instance and type in git clone and paste in the GitHub URL repository. Once you have that installed, you can cd into satintel. In order to run satintel, you can write, type in go run main.go. And once you type that in, you should be presented with this banner display here. And we're going to be using this tool to get the satellite telemetry display of the Sterling satellite. So I'm going to be typing in the number corresponding to that option, 2, and then press enter. And in this case, we're going to be using the NORAD catalog ID. So I'm going to press 2 again. And I know the NORAD ID of the Starlink satellite is 58552 from the N2IO website. And for the latitude, you can enter in the geo coordinates for your location. So I'm going to put in the location of where I want the past details to be from. Altitude can be zero. And you can see that it printed out the information about the Starlink satellite and satellite positions and where when it will assume those positions during the time. So it'll state the longitude and latitude, the altitude, the right eye sensation, declination, and the timestamp of where the satellite will be at. You can also use this tool for orbital predictions. So to use that, you're going to type in three. You can do visual predictions and radio predictions. Visual is when you can actually see the satellite. Radio is what radio communication devices can detect for the satellite in the air. We're going to be using visual in this case, and two for NORAD catalog ID. I could enter in the same NORAD ID from before, so 58552, and I'll just use the same latitude and longitude. Altitude could be zero. Days of prediction, I'll just put in two days. Visibility, 500. And this will give you a catalog of when that 
satellite would pass over, given the details, and it'll give the azimuth, the compass azimuth, uh, time of the pass, and end of the pass, and the visual magnitude, as well as the duration. Lastly, you can use this tool to parse TLEs. To do this, type in 4, and we can do this from a raw string. So let's say I wanted to parse the Starlink satellite from N2IO. I would do this by pasting in the TLE catalog. So for the name, you just put in the name. So I'll just put in Starlink 1046. For the first line, I can type in the line provided in the TLE of N2IO. And then the third line would be the last line of the TLE. And there you have it. In this episode, we covered four different ways you can track down a satellite using open source intelligence, and how descriptors such as Kaplarian elements and TLEs can be used to obtain a satellite's location, orbital details, and other information. If you are interested in using any of the tools featured in this video, or learning more about my work, links to all those programs and my website are included in the description. Thanks for watching.